pop the balloon or find love so we're gonna be watching this series reacting to this brother who claims to be a man of god and his sister asks him a question about success and the way he answers is one of the most beautiful brilliant ways each man of god who's single should be responding so hit that like hit that subscribe and let's check out this video together and you're supposed to be like the one for me like hopefully my husband mm -hmm. you're not about to call for 12 hours you're about to talk about it right now yeah i don't like that so okay that's fine thank you all right you ended up popping his why did we pop his balloon <sighs> the comedy as aspect. Then you say you're gonna go on stage and make a joke out of it. Hey, turn it into turn it into art. Make that money. Take you shopping. <laughs> okay. We'll thank talk you. about the conflicts while we shopping. So you're materialistic. Nah, nah. Just talk about the conflicts while we shopping. You or... look like Jordan Sparks, though. You do. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> so we do still have two balloons left on pop. Okay, uh, fellas, do we have a question for her? I have a question. Okay, let's start here. I noticed you did not pop my balloon when I talked about God, so I wanted to ask you, what's your relationship like with Jesus Christ, if you don't mind sharing? Yes, yeah, so my relationship with God is very, very important. Um, I'm just still working to have a better relationship with Him. Um, as an adult, I'm hoping to get, to get rebaptized at the end of the year and find a church home on my own as an adult. Um, Having God and Jesus Christ in the center of your marriage is very, very important. So I would say that I have a, a great relationship with God, and it's all about having a personal relationship and not just hooting and hollering in the pool pit every Sunday. It's Sunday through Sunday, your personal relationship. Why is she God. getting so, me emotional? Bro? Like, what is she doing? Bro, this is crazy. And as she's, man. Y'all, for real, like, this is crazy because this is the part where a lot of believers, especially online, is this perception of perfect Christians. But we all have our struggles. We all have, you know, different paths in this walk, right? We all call to be set apart. Feel me? Sensification is a process. But nobody got it all together as a Christian. Let's be honest. We all be all bad christians let's let's be let's be honest or else we wouldn't need a savior and i'm not saying we out here clubbing and going crazy no not none of that that's not how i live my life it's just sometimes certain people walk take longer it takes a moment but you never know what god is doing that's why you got to pray for people and always you know be truthful feel me but as the bible says always be ready to give an answer in season and out of season with meekness patience relax so her saying this and just how they engage get engaged in each other's uh you know presence speaking about god nothing like it your bro is talking about i could take you shopping after 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 do a little comedy session joke about it we could do a little shopping listen all love to this brother i hope he truly finds god because he said he's not materialistic but he is Let's be honest. And it's okay. It's all right. We've all been there before. Feel me? So you never know what God is going to do with that brother life as well. It's amazing what God could do, man. Truly, it's amazing. But let's... let's but that's why I did not pop your balloon. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Sunday through Sunday, your personal relationship with God. So that's why I did not pop your balloon. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. We have a question down here. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I know that you write children's books. I think that's very cool. What got you started in writing children's books? Um, it was a personal experience. Um, so the title of my children's book is Why Do You Talk So Proper? So I'm sure you can relate, relate <laughs> or can figure out what it's about. Mm -hmm. So it was all about personal experience. Um, and then when I was doing my research, there wasn't a book that existed about that specific topic catering towards black children from the experience of a black person. Mm. So that's why I wrote my children's book. That's very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right, girl, time to pop one of their balloon. Um, 
May I ask another question? Okay, let's do that. How do holidays look like in the future with your family? Love that question. Mm -hmm. Holidays in the future of my family, definitely going to talk to my lady and see, hey, for this year, do we want to go to your parents? Do we want to go to my parents? Mm -hmm. Do we want to do our own thing? That's just a conversation because it's about us and whatever makes us happy. I've had so many years already with my parents and man's supposed to find his wife, he's supposed to do his thing, mm -hmm. leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife. I'm all about that life, so get me, get me gone. <laughs> What's your favorite holiday? Oh, wow. I would say my favorite holiday is Christmas because I love okay. to see other people receive gifts. Um, the last Christmas, me and my brothers, we decided to not give each other anything but put all that back into our parents. And then okay. to our nieces and nephews, because they're little ones, and okay. the memories for them. How many siblings do you have? I have a lot. I have five brothers. Okay. I have two sisters, so it's eight of us. Where, do and you, I got some where are you from? Nephews. I'm from Texas. What part of Texas? I'm from the Austin area, but I live in San Antonio. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. What was your question again? How um, how do you envision spending your holidays with your future family? Uh, well, I have a very big um, family right now. Okay. Um, I a mixed race, uh, you know, Mexican, black. So we have a lot of get-togethers, and um, you know, I love to take my my future wife, my girl, to those get-togethers, you know, and uh, maybe go there with them one uh, holiday, and then we'll do like I don't know, a getaway, me and my my lady for another holiday and just mix it up, you know, whatever, however you feel comfortable, you know, if you want to go with them or we can just hang out with each other, or, but definitely together for sure. What's your favorite holiday? Honestly, Thanksgiving, because mm -hmm. you don't really have to buy presents per se and everybody gets together, the kids are there, everybody's there. So I say Thanksgiving. Okay, and I love Thanksgiving. Too, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, you said that you're half Mexican? Well, yeah, my mom is, uh, is Cuban, Mexican, and black, and my dad is black. So, so do you know multiple languages? Uh, I speak Spanish and a little bit of French, but Spanish, yes. Say something in Spanish. Um, estás muy bonita y me encajas muy bien. Y si quieres, te quiero llevar para una cita cuando se te antoja. You speak Spanish? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was just interested. I would yeah. love to pick up a second language, mm -hmm. so that's why I was asking. I was trying to see how fluent you really were, or if you knew that second language at all. Yeah, no, yeah, Spanish, and then I'm working on my French a little bit. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm sorry. Where are you? Where do you oh, live? Where are you from? Um. Well, I grew up out here in the valley, okay. but I was born in Illinois. But I moved out here when I was a kid, so I think I was like 11. Mm. So okay. I'm from I'm from the valley. I'm a valley boy. So okay, yeah. All right. Okay, you got a tough decision. Uh oh. Yeah, y'all got the question. Sure. I would love to hear your answer to how you handle stress and conflict. Mm. Um, uh, how I handle stress. Um, up until recently, I wouldn't realize I was stressed. I would have so many things on my plate between work, entrepreneurship, family, and then it wouldn't be until the last minute. Like, oh my gosh, my body is trying to tell me that I am stressed. So um, I want to say over the past year, I have learned to manage my stress a little bit more by having open communication, taking walks, and just trying to figure out what is stressing me out. Like, what do I need to take off of my plate in order to not be so stressed? Um, how I handle conflict? I would say what I also have learned recently is ask questions right away when it comes to conflict, whether it's with your loved ones, your family, or even your friends before it gets too bad. Cause I have bottled up my, like, I have bottled up things in the past, but I have recently learned that that is not healthy and that's not serving either relationship, no matter what the relationship may be. So now I'm just a little bit more um, forthcoming with questions 
and just, you know, asking whatever it might be, may be that's bothering me or what I need to know the answer to. I love it. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to have you now pop one of their balloons. Mm. Yeah, I know it's tough. <laughs> yes, it is. This is a great lineup. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why did we end up popping his? Um, nothing like really... In particular, I just had to make a decision. I really loved your answers, and you know, I really like that you're fluent in Spanish. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, gracias. Oh. De nada. De nada. De nada. Right. <laughs> okay, let me have you come on up here. Come on up, come on up. All right, y'all. So I have one final question, if there's no other questions between the two of you. Okay. How do you define success? I define success as doing what God wants you to do because my role models are in the Bible and a lot of them didn't have money. A lot of them forsook their families just to preach the gospel and follow the calling that God had on their life. My version of success is being in God's perfect will. So that's my version of success. It's not about how much money we have, although I make money and though I provide, but just being the man that God created me to be. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that, I heard you say you were working on your relationship with God. So it's to continue working on it, working out that salvation with fear and trembling all the days of your life. We're not going to be perfect, but we can get as close to God as possible before we finally see him on that last day. Okay. All right. So is it going to be a yes for you for her? It's going to be a absolutely. Uh, yes. And is it a yes for you for him? Yes. We got a match. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and take this mic and you guys can go on off. Oh! <laughs> so listen, here's the, here's the thing. We got to come to the scriptures. Here's the thing. What has been is what will be. And what has been done is what will be done. There is no new thing under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun, my friends. Whatever happened is what will happen. <laughs> There's no new thing. God is the creator of all things. He knows all things. He knows what's going to happen, what has happened, and what will be. Feel me? But Solomon, we believe, is the one writing Ecclesiastes. He experienced these things, these riches, vanity, all of these things he's experienced and realized. We've all, we all going to experience, experience the same thing. And, you know, one one may turn to, oh, there's AI and all these new things. What are you talking about? The human heart will always try to. Like when they were building a tower <laughs> of. Uh, what was it? Bill. And they were building this tower and trying to uh, go up towards God. Even in the midst of this AI creation, it's human form of doing the same thing, bro, just differently. Always trying to be like God. And listen, I love this video because especially him, I don't think I would react to videos like this if it wasn't for this clip that went viral. But um, it was amazing to see this, right? So charm is deceitful. Beauty is vain. Obviously, we are all attracted to, for example, my wife. My wife's attract, attracted to me, right? It starts off like that, but it's vain. Because somebody could be the most beautiful. Then they start speaking, you're like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Right? But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Oh! Listen. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money. No, he who loves wealth with his income. This is also vanity. It's beautiful to have these things. But will it satisfy you for real? Building treasures here on earth. Trying to build this, leg this legacy for your family. Amazing. But will this satisfy you? And will you be able to take those riches? And when you lose it, what happens? Because God gives and God takes. 
Blessed is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And last verse. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation. The lowly brother. Ugh. And the rich in his humiliation. Because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. Ugh. For the sun rises with the scorching heat and withers the grass and his flower falls. And his beauty perishes. Hello. So also would the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. For the word of God is living and active, baby. All scriptures is breathed out by God, profitable for teaching, for correction, reproof, training, and righteousness, that the man of God, right, the human of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. This is how we become equipped as scriptures. So I pray for this brother, I pray for this sister, hopefully they together and build a relationship Christ-centered, right? Have amazing, beautiful babies, a family, and just further the kingdom. Right? Our father in heaven is rich. He's adopting all of us. He got money. <laughs> Something that will never perish. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. May the grace of the Lord be with you, my friends. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, share. Shalom.